Hey y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about my thoughts on the Durston X-Mid Pro 2. The X-Mid Pro 2 is a pretty popular tent, so it can be kind of tricky to get your hands on one. For example, the next batch ship date is February of next year, 2023, but I was finally able to get one and my plan was to test it side by side with the Duplex L out on my through hike of the Arizona Trail, which has been pushed back to the spring, but that is still the plan to be able to compare and contrast them side by side. I set it up in the yard, was able to test it out one night in the rain. But before I get too ahead of myself, let me go ahead and give you a rundown of the features and specs. First, the X-Mid Pro 2 is a two-person tent, like it sounds like with the number two in the name and it has dual zipper doorways on either side. As I've said before, I am a big fan of a doorway on either side. So if you do use a two person tent as a two person tent, then each person has their own entry and exit. The floor layout accommodates two wide tapered pads and people up to heights of six, four. But if you're gonna use this tent as a solo backpacker, then you could be up to seven feet tall and sleep comfortably in the X-Mid Pro 2. They designed this tent so that it would have a full coverage fly and not allow for backsplash. But if you're in a situation where you're not backpacking in the rain, then it can be raised up and have more ventilation. There are also two little vents to help minimize condensation. You might want to shut those if you were to have extreme weather, but if you're camped by a lake or there's a lot of humidity in the air, then you could pop those open for more ventilation. One thing I thought was interesting is they claim this tent performs well in the hail or snow because it doesn't have flat roof areas and that kind of makes sense because with hail coming down, if it's flat, it could pierce the surface more easily and then snow of course will weigh down and sag. In a way, I hope I never have to test this tent in those conditions, but also, I'd like to kind of challenge that statement and see how it really does perform. While this tent only requires four stakes to set up and be functional, there are eight additional stake out points around the base of the tent and also some peak and side guy outs. So if you were going to be in really harsh winds, you could anchor it down a bit more than just those four necessary stakes. Now let's talk about materials. The body of the tent, the outer fly, is made of 0.55 ounce Dyneema. That just means that one square yard of the Dyneema weighs 0.55 ounces. And the floor is made out of 15 denier nylon. So that makes the floor a little more abrasion resistant because it's not Dyneema. But the tent is so lightweight because the majority of the material is Dyneema. Now let's talk about the weight, which for me is very much a deciding factor when it comes to a backpacking shelter. If you're comparing the weight of the X-Mid Pro 2 with the Z-Pax Duplex, then with the stuff sack that each of them comes with, the Z-Pax Duplex is 1.4 ounces lighter than the X-Mid Pro 2. But I feel like it's more fair to compare it to the Z-Pax Duplex L, just given the dimensions and livable space. So in that instance, the X-Mid Pro 2 is 1.3 ounces lighter with its stuff sack than the Z-Pax Duplex L with its stuff sack. And now for the price, which can also be very much a deciding factor for people. The Durston X-Mid Pro 2 is $679. If you opt in for the stakes that they offer, then it's $689. This is very much not a budget tent. And just as a little sad note here, if for some reason you wanted to return this tent, you can do so within 30 days but there is a two year warranty for factory defects. Oftentimes when I introduce a tent with this price point, people are like, whoa, can't you review some budget gear? And I actually have. So I'll put some links to videos where I've talked about budget gear in the video description so you don't get discouraged and think that you have to spend over $600 on a backpacking tent. So now for my personal thoughts on this tent after setting it up and climbing inside of it, the headroom is absolutely incredible. That's the first thing that I noticed when I got inside of it is, wow, my head is not bumping the wall of the tent. And I feel like, you know, I could be pretty comfortable in this tent sitting up straight. The vestibules are absolutely massive. So there's 
Lots of room if you're gonna use this tent as a two person tent for storing gear inside the vestibule. I like the little magnet closures on the doors, but I do wish that the magnet was a little bit stronger. It doesn't take much bumping into that little loop to make it come undone. So I could see where that might possibly be annoying, but I haven't had it out in the field yet, so I don't know. I like also that the doors on either side open up big and you don't have a trekking pole right in the middle of the way when you're going to climb in. My initial impression with seeing how much coverage you really get from the fly of the tent is that it was going to perform well in the rain. I had been waiting for what felt like forever for it to actually rain here and then the day that it finally rained I had oral surgery so I didn't really feel up to sleeping out in a tent in the rain but this past weekend I went to the Foothills Trail Conservancy to give a talk and while I was staying there in town I saw it was supposed to rain so I brought my XMID Pro 2 with me and set it up outside the cabin where we were staying. I let it rain on that tent all day long and it kind of quit later in the evening but then I climbed in at night to camp and sure enough the bottom fell out while I was staying in there but with my sleeping bag and sleeping pad inside the tent all day while it was raining and then even at night there was no backsplash up and around the edges of the floor. My sleeping bag didn't have a bunch of moisture on it. Now the walls did have condensation like you would expect from a single wall tent, but with the way the tent sets up and the netting around the bathtub floor, that condensation just ran right off into the netting. I didn't have it raining on me while I was trying to sleep and I was camped out by a lake with the rain coming down. So like I expected, this tent did perform very well in the rain and kept me dry. I haven't been able to test it out in really high winds yet, but hopefully that will come when I take it on my through hike of the AZT. As of now, I can say that this tent definitely performed better in the rain than the duplex or the duplex L. It doesn't have any pockets? No. The first con I would say that I noticed when I climbed in the tent actually Aaron had to point out to me, was that the tent didn't have any pockets on the inside. And I don't know if I just missed them somehow. They're like in a hidden area, but the website claims that the XMID Pro 2 does have pockets. So if y'all have located pockets that I somehow didn't see, please let me know in the comments. Next, while this tent does have a lot of livable space and I feel like it could work out well for two people, the way the tent is cut and designed for two people to sleep in it is like head to feet not side by side and I understand that design in one way but depending on where you're going backpacking or camping it's not common to find like perfectly flat ground so one person is going to be sleeping with their head downhill while the other one gets the good head uphill side that makes it a little less practical in my mind for two people to actually be as comfortable as they can be. So that's something to look out for if you are actually intending to use this as a two person tent. But I do know that many people use two person tents just for themselves. And I'm one of those folks, I like to kind of plus one on how many people I actually have. So if I were to have two people, I'd be looking for a three person tent. And finally, I have to say that even though this tent only uses four stakes to set up, I didn't find the setup as intuitive as the Z-Pax Duplex or Duplex L or Triplex. I know that I have way more experience with those tents. I mean like months and months and miles and miles compared to setting up the XMID Pro just a couple of times. But it just seems like there's more to kind of finagle with to get the perfect setup. I'm sure after I use it for a through hike, I'll be able to speak to that a little bit better, but that's just my initial impression. Some other things that I'd like to become a little bit more familiar with with the XMID Pro 2 is how to roll it up properly because I've been stuffing it and I know I shouldn't be doing that. And also how to purposefully set it up for a storm. So kind of close to the ground and magically when I did my rain test, I managed to set it up like that. But also when I want more airflow, how to do that on purpose. I think maybe it has to do with extending the trekking poles a little bit higher and make sure when I stake out the corners that 
I've got enough slack so it can raise up. That's my thinking, but I'm just gonna have to play around with it a little bit more and figure it out. So just to sum it all up, I think that the X-Mid Pro 2 seems like a very well-made tent. Yeehaw! It performed really well in the rain for me the other night, so I think that I'm really gonna like it when the weather's not so great. And honestly, I'm very excited to use this tent going forward on actual backpacking trips because I think that this might be the first tent that's gonna give the Z-Packs Duplex or Duplex L a run for its money, at least for me and my personal preferences. And I've been stuck on the Z-Packs Duplex or Duplex L for quite a while now. And everything that I've tried has just kind of been like, no, nope, no, nope, I don't like it as much. So this one might actually have a chance of becoming my go-to. So that's just kind of exciting. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for watching. If any of y'all have experience with the Durston X-Mid Pro 2, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go, and we will see y'all next time.